Mm-hmm. Okay, so here we are. So hi. Um, so we'll start with introductions then. Um, Cindy, I'm going to hand over to you to introduce yourself first. Yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, hello to to everyone who uh, is going to listen to our chat. I'm Cindy Van Ryder. I'm a, ja- a Belgian writer, as you can hear. Pardon my French, as you say. <laughs> uh, I'm a young adult uh, writer. I've write, written quite a dozen novels, uh, all in French. Um, sorry, but none is available yet in English, but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've met Lucy uh, through Twitter mm-hmm. uh, when she was looking for a CP reader, mm-hmm. a beta reader, and uh, from this time on, we are getting on like, um, how do you say, match in fire? <laughs> Something like this. House on fire. <laughs> House on fire. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks, Cindy. Yeah, so yeah, we did meet on Twitter, which is, um, I think it was like two two years ago now, something like that. Oh, a bit over. more, I think. Maybe like, three. I got, yeah, I, three years ago. I, I don't know, time the blur. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so I'm Lucy McLaren. Um, I am a also a young adult uh, writer. No releases yet, but my debut book is coming out uh, May next year, 2022. Um, so it's a fantasy book called A Child's Awakening and is part of the reason why we're here like today. So talking about, um, I guess, how would you sum it up? Like, rape culture and all that everything that comes into that really wide category um but so if I kind of specifically go into then what's brought me into this and then you can feel free to add your own stuff Cindy but um for me kind of so in A Child's Awakening my book um so it's a multi-perspective book but one of the characters Evelyn um she's so she's 18 years old and what is part of her backstory um, is a, a rape that she experienced. Um, and I know, I know I've seen kind of criticism of rape being included in stories that, we, that we've, we've read and, and that I've read as well um, in, in terms of like, oh, why does there have to be a rape for like a woman to find herself kind of thing? Uh, and I was really conscious of that writing this and wanting to make sure that's not what this is is for me I wanted to include it because I feel so strongly about you know stuff like the fact that rape culture is even a thing um things like the me too movement um so I created this backstory for her because I wanted to explore that within the story that I was writing so it's a fantasy setting but we're looking at contemporary issues really um and as you kind of read on in the story, uh, it becomes clear that she was treated very badly after her rape, like not believed. And that's something that happens way too much uh, in our culture. Um, like a shocking amount. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Um, I will just interrupt you uh, just one moment mm. because uh, I had the privilege to, to read this book. And it's a wonderful book, really. It's a wonderful series. <laughs> and uh, I am I very much looking forward to the release in 2022. And in the meantime, I recommend you all to, to really pre-order this book and to, uh, to get behind the sea with this uh, wonderful writer. Um, speaking about uh, the, the rape uh, of Evelyn, of uh, your character, mm-hmm. I... I do think uh, you have um, very consciously and in a very sensitive way mm. avoided the, the bias, the, the cliche you were talking about, um, mm. according to which uh, only um, sexual abuse or abuse in a general way mm. makes a female character stronger for the mm. story. Um, there's a real reason behind uh, Evelyn's development as a character Mm -hmm. and the fact that she was uh, raped um, earlier in the story uh, that you um, 
really mentioned it bit by mm -hmm. bit in the backstory of your of your book mm -hmm. um, does bring a really important um, image for for her and uh, mm -hmm. for the story you are bringing to life in this book and um, of course uh, maybe uh, I'm, I'm partial to it because uh, I've loved your story so much <laughs> and I've loved your character so much especially Evelyn and mm -hmm. And many others uh, we are we might be uh, we might mention uh, later mm -hmm. in our chat but yeah i do think um as a reader as a writer it was it was very uh very consciously written so as to avoid this uh, particular mm -hmm. cliche yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <Let's go> <laughs> no i appreciate that because that was kind of at the back of my mind was like yeah I've seen criticisms of of rape origin stories uh, being mm -hmm. a thing for female characters, right. and um, because yeah, I'm I'm kind of interested in it from the mental health perspective as well, and I try and explore the the trauma side of things with Evelyn, in so far as looking at the impact this experience had on her when it happened, and the impact that it still has on her, the fact that. A, she was raped, B, she wasn't believed, and how that yeah. continues to kind of colour her actions and, and her, you know, her inner thoughts and all that kind of thing. And it's it's kind of through the relationship that she develops with Rafe, who is one of the other main uh, characters in the story. Um, he's one of the first people that believes her and, and shows her that... Um, Actually, not everyone is is going to disbelieve you when this kind of thing happens to you. <clears throat> and it's that kind of thing that helps her to start processing what happened and working through the trauma. But, yeah, from a, I mean, as I said, from a mental health perspective, it was important for me to try and be as sensitive as possible because um, I'm, I'm a counsellor as well. I, I do work with... Yeah. Um, you do have some, some experience, yeah. um, some professional experience. Uh, exactly. From this um working with teenagers and, and young children um so it's kind of taking on board my personal experiences personal experiences of of people that I know clients that I've worked with taking into account theories that I've studied within counseling and stuff like that so I've tried to bring all this into the, the, the story that I'm telling um mm. and it shows really it shows <laughs> thank you yeah I appreciate that because it's just it's hard trying to take so many different things on board. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's just, it was one of those things that I really felt was important to include. Um, and I know it's it kind was of really, really, I, I do think uh, we, mm -hmm. we need to have uh, more uh, stories and especially mm -hmm. young adult stories mm -hmm. uh, showing um, that trauma, it's not just a pretext to, mm. uh, to make the, the character stronger, mm. but the, it can be a real topic to discuss in, mm. uh, in our stories, and especially when we are writing for teenagers and young adults. Yeah, I totally agree, because I think that age group in particular can be uh, mm. very, can be vulnerable, can be open to... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? My mind has gone blank. <laughs> they are maybe um, more open to discussion. Uh, yeah, on I think it's important. Topic because uh, the ideas uh, might not be set, um, mm, might not be yeah. set in stone as uh, mm. more uh, of the adults are. And uh, mm -hmm. if we can lead them into questioning uh, mm -hmm. all the they think they know about these mm -hmm. topics uh, such as mental health in general mm -hmm. or um, abuse in a very specific way mm -hmm. uh, I think this is kind of our responsibility as young adult writer to mm -hmm. to do this yeah yeah I think so um, and I guess you know I we said at the beginning we're talking about rape culture but it's kind of a wider subject than that in terms of like you said their abuse um, mm -hmm we've both kind of spoken about previously the idea that in young adult fiction there can be problematic depictions of what I would deem abusive relationships right toxic relationships 
Um, I don't want to name any names, but I've certainly been shocked. At we want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm not, I'm not here to to, uh, to judge anyone specifically but I have seen no. stories that are very popular um yeah and been absolutely shocked at, at like at the the content and the yeah. way that this this glamorization of really toxic unhealthy relationships um that include abuse gaslighting there's all this kind of stuff that's very problematic um and it's it's a bit scary really i think uh i think it's it's very scary actually uh especially in uh in stories intended for such uh, an audience uh, Mm. for such a young audience and the fact that we that those kind of stories are such successful mm. and they are kind of allowed to, to be published without any prior examination, mm. uh, without any, um, I don't want to say uh, some validity stamp, but some, uh, some discussion mm. uh, beforehand. Mm-hmm. I think it's very problematic and mm. okay, uh, things are changing. They are changing quite slowly, we know yeah. that, but they are changing all the same in the publishing mm-hmm. world. And yeah. that's a very good thing because um, I'm, I've been reading young adults for more than 10 years now. <laughs> um, yeah, more, yeah, more than 10 mm. years. We are going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Not talking about age. <laughs> That um, I do remember that uh, in earlier days, when a young adult was uh, was making such a break in uh, bookstores mm. and uh, and libraries and so on, um, people were eager to get their hands on the the, mm. the newest, the, the latest successful book uh, yeah. in that uh, age category mm-hmm. and. Um, in this uh, craze for young adults, uh, we, I think, uh, we have forgotten to to examine um, what was really being published at this time. Mm. I, I don't say that uh, there are no longer problematic books in the in the young adult world. Of course, mm. there are, but in earlier days, with my readers' experience. Mm-hmm. I do think uh, we have um, not examined uh, really consciously and deeply what was being published at this time. Mm. And the, the topic of abusive relationships and mm-hmm. gaslighting and rape culture uh, was so prevalent in some books. Uh, this was really, uh, really scary at the time. Mm. And yeah, we have a bit of... Um, background there, reflecting of what I've read uh, some, some year uh, ago. Mm-hmm. I was really shocked uh, when I felt about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We want to mention the, the titles, but... Uh, no, I can think of I, some titles though, yeah. Of, of yeah. one same here, ones that I read when I was late teens, early twenties. Um, so about 10 years ago as well. Yeah. <laughs> um this sounded a good time. <laughs> but kind of revisiting those now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can yeah. think, oh, okay, actually, that was really popular at the time, but okay, that's that's some very questionable things now. Um mm-hmm. and I think you're right about the fact that things are changing very slowly, but there's kind of you know, there's a subset of authors I think who are very conscious of the issues that have come before and want to kind of fight against them and make sure that's not going to continue on in the stories they're writing us included because we're obviously trying to trying to be conscious of these issues and Mm -hmm. not include them in our stories um but I think there are still there are still really popular books being published um that are very problematic like you said and it is it is scary um because I mean, if we think about it in terms of 
um, you know, going back to the rape culture, um, the fact that I, I personally believe you can link this, this glamorization of toxic relationships um, and rape culture, they kind of, in a way, go hand in hand because it's there's that myth of, oh, people are raped by strangers walking home alone in the dark at, at night. That's not the case. You know, it's, it's usually someone that yeah. is known to the victim. Um, and... Yeah, and I'm sorry, but this cliche is so, so, so widely spread in mm. our media and entertainment. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was, um, yeah, when I was a child, and uh, I'm, I'm nearing 14 now, but when I was a child and still a teenager, mm. uh, the main idea of rape victims were uh, women alone in mm. the dark, uh, mm. meeting a stranger and getting assaulted for it mm -hmm. yeah. while and we we know now that it's, it does not reflect at all the reality of mm -hmm. what rape is no. and how rape is committed mm -hmm. and a french journalist uh, which is uh, with name uh, julia Foyce, mm -hmm. um, has written a book called uh, the good rape literally it's it's called the good rape mm -hmm. because she was attacked by a stranger at night in a parking lot mm -hmm. and uh, her story was believed mm -hmm. and it led to a conviction mm -hmm. while so many stories of rape victims yep. are not believed mm -hmm. and they do not lead to a conviction because mm -hmm. it does not fit uh, well, the, the the stereo the stereotype yeah. we have about rape mm -hmm. and and this is really shocking to see oh it's still still going on in our society mm. right now mm -hmm. and when you see the, the conviction rate for for rape oh, it's, for yeah. crime related yeah. to rape mm -hmm. and well it's only i don't know yeah i've seen mm. It's less than six percent. Uh, five point seven percent of yeah. the reported rape cases end in a conviction for the perpetrator. Um, it, it's and that's it's of reported cases. You know, that's yeah. not not everyone who is raped reports it because of these low conviction rates. Because you've gone through the trauma of this horrific mm -mm. thing being done to you, and then the fact that the conviction rates are so low going through kind of essentially what is a, a potentially re-traumatizing experience disclosing to what happened to you to the police having to be physically examined all of these and, things that come with it not belief it. For it. and you yeah. think what's the, the if the chance of them being convicted is 5.7 percent yeah it's uh it is, it is it's shocking. like you 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 have to endure a second time mm. uh happened to you mm -hmm. and you you got uh, a reaction mm -hmm. uh, just in front of you with being uh, uh, already negative mm -hmm. negative because uh, we there is a, a discussion uh, still uh, going around uh, especially in France mm -hmm. uh, because police officers have been um, have been told uh, mm -hmm. they, they do not um, they do not listen to, uh, mm. really in mm. a very sensitive way. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to put it like this mm -hmm. uh, to rape victims. And this, lead, this leads to a serious, um, to serious arms for, mm -hmm. for these victims, but also to a really, really low rate of conviction, mm -hmm. also in France and in Belgium. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so widespread in our culture mm -hmm. that um, some of rape victims are getting the blame for this. Yeah. And um, like just looking at a quote, really it, yeah. a third of people believe women who flirt are partially responsible for being raped. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you you uh, you sent me a few bits before our chat today about um the fact that people are um say things like oh she shouldn't dress like that some girls are just asking yeah. for it um 
she led him on to all this kind of stuff it 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 really is it is so common to hear that um and that victim blaming mentality is really really um it's almost like a knee-jerk reaction i think for some people um because maybe that that i the 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 greater implications of what's the fact that rape culture is so prevalent maybe that's scary to really examine maybe people don't want to examine that because no no they the the, i think that some people are still um very much relented reluctant Mm -hmm. to to examine this Mm -hmm. as you say and because if we start exploring uh, rape culture and its consequences Mm -hmm. in our society uh, where does that leave us Mm. it does leave us with um, a kind of um, a story which does not fit what we have been told about rape and rape victims Mm. and it it tells us uh, the story that it can happen to anyone, anywhere, yeah. and regardless of age, mm-hmm. race, or, or social class. Mm-hmm. And why it leads to, to, to many embarrassing questions, to many scary questions. Mm-hmm. And we don't want, I, I, don't know, I think that we have a kind of uh, instinctive, instinctive reaction to this, mm. um, that... Do we really want to explore what, uh, why our society produce uh, mm-hmm. so much uh, rapist and, uh, and produce so much of rape culture and why we have been surrounded with this mm-hmm. at such a, 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 in our childhood? Why? Yeah. Um, really, it right. really asks us some very yeah. scary questions, as you said. Because um, it brings to mind there's a theory um, in psychology called <clears throat> cognitive dissonance theory. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. heard of it, um, but basically it says that if some information is presented to someone, um, they kind of respond to it in uh, one of three ways. Either they'll take it on board and change their own viewpoint accordingly um they'll completely disregard it because it doesn't fit in with their point of view so they'll say oh no no that i'm just gonna ignore that or they'll twist it to fit into how they see things so i think we see a lot of those those second two the either ignoring it or twisting it somehow where people will either just not look not 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 look at those statistics not take on board people the, the the stories of survivors or they'll say, "Oh well, you were out. You were drunk. You were, why did why yeah. did you walk home on your own? Uh, why didn't you get a taxi? What why didn't you do all these things to prevent this this from happening to you?" Um, so yeah, I, I think um, it's sometimes easier for people to to respond in that way than examine the real implications of it of the fact that this happens and. Um, it, of course yeah uh it's really horrifying um so i guess that we could we could kind of look on to um your own if you don't mind talking about your own project here because i know that's the reason why we're talking about it today is something we're both very passionate about and yeah, i think uh, that's, that's showing in our chat yeah uh-huh. <laughs> Um, and the fact that we both kind of w- are wanting to include these kind of themes uh, and exploration of them within our storytelling. Um, now, obviously, you've, um, like you said that you, earlier, you've got you've got your books published in French, but you're working on um, English language yeah. stories as well, right? Uh, um, absolutely, absolutely. I'm um, I'm working on it because. Uh, um, yeah, I'm working as a translator, um, first of all, and second of all. Second reason, I was always very interested in um, making a break <laughs> in the English speaking mm-hmm. market. So, yeah, I, uh, I've gotten with this project, uh, which is called Rose Girls. Mm-hmm. And it's a young adult mystery. It's set into a dystopian world where mm-hmm. women are divided between good girls and the others. Mm-hmm. And uh, in fact, it 
is um, they are selected at birth because mm -hmm. uh, in this world, when a little girl is born with a rose, really uh, a rose like mark mm -hmm. on her forehead, which is called the mark. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that they are uh, intended to become uh, mother wives and mothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those born without this mark, um, they are sent uh, directly beyond the wall, mm -hmm. uh, along with the Republic's renegades. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a motto, each woman in a place and mm -hmm. all will be well, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, my main character is uh, Abigail. Uh, she's 17, and fortunately for her, she is a rose girl. Mm -hmm. And, well, in her ignorance, uh, she doesn't know that uh, an epidemic is uh, spreading through the Republic. I know it sounds familiar, but I promise it was uh, written before <laughs> all this uh, pandemic with the COVID and so on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry if it brings... Uh, <laughs> And it from my autumn. <laughs> it wasn't my intent. Mm -hmm. And uh, an epidemic is spreading through the Republic, and it causes uh, it causes the mark to change on women's skin. Mm -hmm. And she's also unaware that a killer is preying on women uh, who cope the disease, mm -hmm. and that he consider somehow as impure, mm -hmm. and that must be, that they must be punished in this point of view. Mm. And well, Abigail's in ignorance is shattered when she herself is assaulted. She miraculously survives, but her eyes are opened to the reality of a society where she believes she was safe. Mm -hmm. When her boyfriend is arrested uh, and charged for assaulting her, she embarks on a quest to not only identify the true killer, but also mm -hmm. uncover the truth behind this disease. Mm -hmm. And in order to do so, she must question everything she thought she knew. Mm -hmm. What if a woman's future uh, doesn't depend on whether or not she has the mark on her skin? And what if she is free mm -hmm. to do her own choices? That is... Um, quite uh, the long pitch for this project <laughs> but I know and as as you know um, that it has been a long time it has been a long time in the making I've toyed um, several times with these uh, with these topics um, in other stories and I think I have still I have still to uh, to grow up, mm. to uh, to learn about uh, these particular topics in order to be able to to write uh, rose girls now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, finger crossed that uh, it will be uh, as ready, as beautifully written in my mind as it will be uh, yeah. <laughs> in truth. <laughs> I'm sure it will be. You know, I love your stories um, and thank you. Your the way you, you write things and yeah I'm looking forward to reading it um Thank you. As, as you were talking that like kind <laughs> <Yes>. of <laughs> but what strikes me is like this idea of um like you say like the rose girls are the the good girls and they fit into this um what a woman should be and you said if you it's kind of parallel to our society and like okay if a woman fits into all these uh categories and acts in this specific way then you will not have this horrible like you won't be raped you won't be sexually assaulted in any way because you'll fit into this uh like good girl kind of ideal um but mm -hmm. actually that's not the case and it sounds like that's the kind of thing you're trying to say there well, actually no that's not that's not a barrier against horrible things happening to you um in that's an ideal world that's that's what people would would have you believe but that is in no way how the world actually works um and I know you were doing yeah, a lot of research, weren't you, when you were writing this around... It's kind of, of reassuring, you know, that uh, uh, we have this kind of idea of um, if, if we behave, if we act, if we yeah. dress mm -hmm. uh, in some way, then we won't get raped. Mm. Uh, this really... Uh, 
this is an idea widely spread in our media and entertainment, mm -hmm. um, which uh, which are really policing uh, the mm -hmm. way we we act, we dress, we speak, mm -hmm. and among others, and and to men specifically, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's always uh, the the idea of uh, of woman of uh, strict woman. Yeah, uh, exactly. Men, which go and which later. Uh, got them into trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously, yeah, we're talking in very kind of gender normative terms here, but of course, it's yeah. the, a person of any gender identity can be raped. Um, and it's, I think that's something, again, people struggle to get their head around. And um, I think what comes to mind for me when I think of this kind of thing is. The, I don't know what the percentage is, and I wish I'd looked it up, but I know that the percentage of perpetrators of rape is um, the majority is male, or the, or the perpetrators of rape. Um, that is a percentage of statistics that cannot be denied, um, but a, a person of any gender can be raped. And, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's just an issue that is so widespread um and yeah, it, it sorry, doesn't God. happen uh, always to to, to women or mm. person or people identifying as, mm. as women um and it was very important to me uh to um state this into mm. those girls because as a queer and non-binary person yeah and um, i do think that uh, gender biases uh really mm. um, limit us into uh, what we are able to think, what we are mm -hmm. able to, how we are able to act uh, as mm -hmm. regards rape culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it, it doesn't always um, apply to, uh, sorry, I will start again. <laughs> it, it doesn't always happen to, to straight women and no. the people, and the culprits are not always uh, straight men. No. So yeah, it was very important to uh, to tell this and to say uh, that unfortunately, um, sexual assault uh, can happen to to anyone anywhere, and no matter the gender. Yeah, um, I think that is the key issue. There, it's not. There's no set. Um, one one type of person that can be a victim of this kind of behavior um okay so i guess a way to round this off then would be um to think about how <clears throat> we we think how how authors can like navigate this um and prevent the kind of perpetuation of this the glamorized toxic relationship the the idea of rape culture and this kind of thing that all links together how can we yeah. prevent that as writers from being perpetuated in um like young adult stories in particular because that's what we write but in in stories in general um and I know you had some thoughts on this uh, kind of what, what were your thoughts in terms of that what do you think writers can do to prevent it I do think that as a uh, writers uh, writing for for teenagers and young adults, um, I've already said that uh, we have this responsibility, this kind of moral obligation mm. uh, to examine uh, our work critically mm -hmm. and in a really constructive way. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not only us uh, who can do uh, this work, but we are also, um, we must uh, submit our work to external point of views. Mm, yeah. uh, we, we have so many resources uh, to, uh, to help us with this kind of thing. We have uh, better readers, we have critique partners, we have sensitivity readers, especially important when we are talking about uh, um, sensitive topics or when we are writing about min um, minorities. 
-hmm. And uh, this is really important that we do this work because uh, otherwise I do think we are letting down some uh, the young people mm. who might yeah. read our work, you know. Yeah. And this is why I, I admire so much your, your work, really, uh, because uh, you've done uh, so... You, you have prepared uh, this so carefully and so in a very sensitive way, mm -hmm. not only because of your professional background, but also because uh, you have um, submitted your work not only to critic partners like me, but also to, to sensitive reader. And it is really something I, I applaud with both ends. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I think I agree. Because, you know, I think, like you said, having outside eyes looking at your work can yeah. make all the difference. Because sometimes you can become so blinkered uh, as to your own writing. Um, you don't see issues maybe that someone else would point out, which I totally found from mm. having, yeah, beta readers critique partners sensitivity readers um were really valuable um I also think kind of educating yourself on the statistics like the kind of things we're talking about today yeah. like I'm going to put a link into mm -hmm. where I got my statistics from which is rape crisis which is the UK kind of organization that provides support for survivors of um sexual assault and rape um but it's you know there's this kind of education around trauma and the impact that can have um being aware of the toxic nature of relationships that have been seen in the media and have been really popular for whatever reason and yeah. being aware that actually that's that's that can be incredibly damaging um and that's not that is not a safe way to portray a relation a healthy relationship because I, I you know as I mentioned earlier and not to try and open another tangent here because I don't want <laughs> I could talk about this for ages but you know I ha having worked with young people I have had them certain comments about oh I'm, I'm a real fan of this uh this film yeah Netflix, or, <laughs> and I was like that's concerning because you're like yeah. 13 years well, old and yeah that, that has a very toxic relationship portrayed in it yeah. uh, and I oh, found yeah. that very worrying um and yeah I just think awareness is kind of number one in this and from that will come people doing research and trying to get their education and basically get rid of that that filter of would ignorance be the right word I, I, don't, I don't know lack of awareness whatever you want to call it that can really like color how you see things and you know personal experience I have changed considerably since I was 18 years old I used Absolutely. to think you know certain things were okay and now going back to them nope they're, they're not okay and no. uh, I think once you have that awareness you can't switch it off like your brain just has that information now so you can't uh, you, you can't go back to no. to where you you were and mm. uh, this is really a phase of uh, of deconstruction mm. uh, yeah. when you start it uh, you know that it's going to to end it's going to to have no end Mm -hmm. It's going to, to last uh, all your life mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it never, never really, um, mm. never really finishes. No, but really, mm. yeah, and you can't, you can't see things uh, the way you were seeing them before. Mm. And it's really helping. Mm -hmm. uh, we can only improve if we accept this fact, uh, yeah. and we are talking constantly talking to young people and mm. listening to them mm. and speaking of education <laughs> I'm going to to mention at least one positive example mm -hmm. uh, of a series uh, which got uh, worldwide success and it's sex education oh on, yeah mm -hmm. yeah sex education on the tricks I'm not going to to mention uh, <laughs> Yeah. any folder on this but really when <laughs> I was watching the show and I was really really glad that young people now are going to have such um, an example of all mm. um, 
we can communicate with each other mm. uh, about uh, yeah sensitive topics absolutely uh, about body image mm -hmm. about uh, healthy relationships about it's not okay uh, to accept something even if you love each other even even if you think you you mm -hmm. love the other and uh, he or she they are imposing something mm -hmm. you you don't feel okay with this mm -hmm. and uh, the, the 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 very topic of sexual assault was mentioned in mm -hmm. uh, in this series and mm -hmm. i think it was very um sensitively done mm -hmm. uh, it could have been um so so scary and so problematic but mm -hmm. they they don't mention it like this and uh, they they really sent out the message to all uh, victims that we hear you we mm -hmm. see you and we believe you mm -hmm. and this is really really important not mm -hmm. only for young people but for all people watching this series and mm -hmm. who have uh, who might unfortunately have gone through this uh, very stage mm. at some point in their life absolutely 100 I, I have to i had to mention uh, <laughs> sex education I think <laughs> it, it's great yeah i recommend it as well it's a brilliant series and i think that's a good note to end on because it is a positive and it is that's kind of i, I guess what we're trying to do is also provide that message of yeah people are there to listen people are there there are people that will believe you and you know it's okay to feel whatever you feel having gone through this um and it's good that there is there is this slowly growing awareness around this issue and media like that that is giving that message out and i think that's is really valuable um yeah, and I think that's a great place to end it because it kind of ends on that slight positive. We're on an upward traje trajectory and we will get there. <laughs> we will get there, but yeah. there's still a long, long, long way ahead of mm -hmm. us because uh, there's so much uh, lying around and uh, which is uh, very, very problematic, uh, mm -hmm. not only um, for straight women but also for all kinds of people mm -hmm. uh, when I think of uh, people uh, who are marginalized uh, who, are in, who belong to minority minorities mm -hmm. and uh, who are not well even less likely to be hurt uh, mm -hmm. because of what they are who they okay. are and um, yeah it's really heartbreaking especially oh, yeah. uh, when you belong to one of these uh, minorities mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah completely oh, yeah. yeah let's believe uh, for the better for the future <laughs> yeah we can, we're chipping away right that's all we can do <laughs> that's the aim just get get that awareness out there okay so yeah we will uh we'll wrap up our chat here so thank you cindy it's been uh thank you real for the, interesting the kind chat. <laughs> you're welcome and i will speak to you again soon